This is episode number 386 of the Inner Fight Podcast. We are back again. Second big show of 2018. It's a brand new year. We have the same show sponsor, Smith Street Paleo, still fueling us, still giving Andre about 25 brownies per day to eat. (laughs) Go over to iTunes, rate and review the podcast, and we will give you a whole bag of goodies from Smith Street Pillow. Big shout out to those guys. Today we are into you guys. We're into another edition of the podcast, the health and fitness show, the region's biggest health and fitness show. This is the Inner Fight Podcast and we are talking all about your questions with our answers. (laughs) Yeah. We're getting some different stuff through, but, but before we jump into that, Andre, we are now second show, second bit show. Fitness in under three minutes is obviously still there, but second major show. First one was with Amanda. Yep. Second big show of the new year. How has the new year been for you so far, mate? Let's have a quick deload of the festive season because I think that's where all the cock-ups are made. Where are we at now? Mate, it's been a really strong start. Um, Christmas was really good. New Year's was good. I made it to midnight. Did you? I just made it to midnight. <laughs> oh, I didn't. <laughs> With an alarm that woke me up, basically. Oh, really? <laughs> Mate, it's actually funny you should say that. I woke up at 11.55, saw the, saw the clock, and just went straight back to sleep. That's how I did. I really? Mean, you might. The thing is, I didn't want to start the 1st of Jan just sleeping in yeah. all day, being super lazy. Yeah. And the funny thing was actually that 1st of Jan was actually supposed to be a rest day. I also had no clients booked in, and I was like... Shit! <laughs> I can't start the year with like the God. laziest day ever. Really? So I moved all my training to that day, and and I woke up super early and just hit two sessions yeah. and and had a good day. Christmas period okay for you? Yeah, man, relax. No, no overeating. No overeating at all. No overeating. I was here this year, so it's just super chill with my friends and and yeah. my girlfriend. I'm interested to see what people thought of the two shows we put out, the two fitness in under three minutes, number 381, Managing Christmas, and then also 383, Fitness New Year in the fitness in under three minutes. That'll be super interesting. I hope people are managing to catch those shows over the Christmas period. Yeah. One thing that I do want to point out to people is two shows that we did put out. I know you guys are super busy around Christmas, so you might not have had time to listen to them, but they are definitely definitely shows you want to listen to the first one that we put out on december the 21st which was with our friend from crossfit media nicola renault nearly got it (laughs) (laughs) that was a super cool show and he is putting together an a mate by the looks of things he sent me some clips of the the documentary that he's putting together about muhammad al kasimi and his journey basically that's going to be that's going to be crazy yeah so stay tuned for that one yeah stay tuned for his video and definitely tune in to that podcast 380 380 on its own yeah no no one no two 380 is that one it was interesting though mate to chat to him as well like about being part of crossfit media Did, was it what you thought it was gonna be it was actually i know yeah. him from back home so i kind of know a lot about that stuff but it's really interesting to interview him because he goes so much behind the scenes and he sees, you know, the athletes when they're not in front of the camera too. Right. You know, he sees how people act uh, like with each other, interact with the with the crew, like yeah. how do they treat the media crew, those kind of things. Yeah, right. That says a lot about different personalities. Yeah. And I mean, he, yeah, he knows, he obviously knows. It, it was funny because you like... This guy knows everything about everyone. Yeah. Like, he literally knew everything about CrossFit, everything about everyone, right? You know, and he knows, he knew the times of all the athletes in the workout. It was like he was almost a, a commentator or a, a statistician for Man, CrossFit. he probably could be. Yeah, it was. But you know what I like about that, mate, is that he's obviously found something that he's passionate about, and yep. he just had... I mean, you could have spoken to him for hours. He had so much energy about CrossFit and about his job. Yeah. But it would be interesting because he's almost like a fly on the wall, really, isn't he? He's like, I I didn't think about it the way that you said it then and the way that he was saying it. Like, he's literally, he's in the warm-up area. He sees you on the competition floor, and then he sees your reaction. And he's just, it was really cool. Like, he was saying at regionals last year how he was... His job or what he was waiting for was the reaction of yep. one of those guys that was... Was it a Gideas and Esslinger that were like neck it, to it, neck? I don't no, know. No, it was a Gideas and Hugbear. Okay. And Hugbear didn't make it this right. year. Like the first time. And yeah. 
so long. Right. And um, yeah, so he made the, I think it's called the story of yes. Meridian Regional. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't checked that one out, you should definitely go see that because this year was a thriller. Yeah, it was. And he had ca- he captured all the cool moments, all the hot moments. Yeah. So that was 380, which we put out on December 21st. We know you're busy, so make sure you go back and re-listen. We know in Jan that you're on detox, you're on deload, you're not drinking, you're not eating at least for the first 10 days, and you have a lot of time to check these podcasts out. Also, one, I really, really, I listen to pretty much every single podcast or bits of every single podcast. This one, I... I'm not saying it's one of my favorite, but it was, I really got a lot out of it the second time when I listened to it again. 382 with Montgomery, Andrew Monty Montgomery. He was like, a lot of people messaged me and said, when I saw this podcast, I was like, I'm not interested in cycling. Like even Holly, I made Holly listen to it when we were in South Africa. And she goes, what do I want to listen to this guy? I know him. He's Monty from the bike shop. You know, he's... He's going to be talking about cycling. It was it was such a cool show. Like not not because I was on it and you weren't nothing to do with that. No, no, but but it was like you know this guy worked for the guys from Oasis, goes to London, like just hops around, but has these values, and I just learned a lot from it. So yeah. I think people should definitely. That, again, that was out at a sticky time. We just keep kept on pumping the shows out. That came out on the twenty eighth of December. Yeah. So you may have missed it. Go and check out 382 as well with Monty. And the title, as it says, is absolutely legit. Oasis Bikes and Life. Oasis as in the rock band. So wow. he thinks he's from Oasis Rock Band. <laughs> he looks he, like it. He looks like looks a little bit like uh, Noel Gallagher or Liam Gallagher, one or the other. So they're the shows that you need to check out. Andre also has been super busy. Do you want to tell the guys who we've got coming on the show, who they can look forward to in the next few months? Yeah, so a little we bit have- of a teaser. I think five more shows lined up um, throughout this month that's going to pop out in Jan, Feb, March, something like that. We have Yami Tikkanen from The Training Plan. Uh, one of the OGs of CrossFit, really. Yeah. He was the CrossFit Level 1 Flow Master, I think. He what? runs yep. the biggest CrossFit online programming in the world. Is that right? And with the biggest, um, it must be the biggest, also the best results like wow if you look at the number of games athletes regionals athletes wow like compared to any other programming he's based out of london as well yeah wow i think he has about like 500 or more people officially following it wow that yeah. and is that bigger than sort of some of the the big programs that you get out of the you States? have to subscribe to it so right. i mean subscription wise yeah. yes but wow. i think for example if you compare to competitors training yeah. comp, pr- comp train Right. Uh, by Ben Bergeron. Right, I was going to say. That's a free program, and so, you don't know how many subscribe to right, that. So, right. I mean, measurement, measurable, like, subscribers, that must be the biggest. Right. Because um, they're also all over the place. It's not only in Europe. They have plenty of the athletes from Australia, yep. plenty of games athletes from the States, yep. and they're really broad. I mean, his fam- most famous athlete is Annie. Right. And he's been with her ever since Since the, beginning. the start, yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely one to look out for. We'll try and not get too geeky in that. Try and make it a yeah. little bit digestible. But I think what's going to be interesting in that show, mate, is just really understanding sort of people coming to CrossFit now. It's 2018. CrossFit started way back. And Yami sort of took that plunge to be a full-time CrossFit coach yeah. when no one had – I mean, no one now has a lot of money to pay a coach, but no one had any idea where this thing would go. So exactly. that's going to be a super interesting show. Yeah. What else have we got lined up? Bobby Maximus. Ooh. This is a big one. Um, super, super busy man. So we're excited to get him on, and we're super thankful that he'll take his time to, to speak to us. Um, he comes from the Jim Jones. Right now, he runs his own brand just called Bobby Maximus. Right. And it's like a whole mythology itself. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see how that one pans out as well, because obviously he went to Jim Jones a few years ago, spent a few years there, did some great work, is now no longer with the guys at Jim Jones, so interested to hear yeah. what he is up to. But he's a guy that fought in the UFC. He's an incredibly big guy, strong dude, and takes no shit. So exactly. Canadian, Super. actually, by birth. Okay. Uh, origin, yeah, I believe. All right. I hope that's right because if I've screwed that up, I'd look like an absolute <laughs> asshole. But no, I'm we'll see. Sure, pretty sure he's from Canada. So, yeah, he's going to be a, a, a cracker to have on the show as well. Then we have Mike Molly, Molloy from the States, who is a nutritionist, a doctor awesome. as well, has a PhD. He works with many of the top, top 
Games athletes and right. as well as regional athletes and open athletes uh, on individualized nutrition. Right. Um, that's going to be super interesting yeah. as that's a massive aspect of the sport and also that's one thing that's really been like blowing up lately yeah for crossfitters like taking their nutrition a lot more serious do you um, think why, why do you think that is mate i mean because this is i think this is a, yeah. a, a good talking point as well and, and we'll find out more from mike but why why do you think there's a bigger attention now on nutrition within the crossfit within crossfit athletes than there ever was before I just think back in the day, you could make it to regionals in the games without caring about it. Right. And therefore, wow. nobody took it that serious. But if we compare wow. to any other sport yeah. like that has been there for a long time, nutrition yeah. is, is super, super important. Yeah, right. But simply because it hasn't been difficult enough, the competition hasn't been hard enough, really? and I don't think people have taken it serious enough. So like, if you ask now, like all the top guys, they are all on pretty strict meal restrictions or plans, and, yeah. um, and it's all pretty individualized. And it's going to be interesting to speak to this guy because he's like a macro guy. He, he works a lot with macro un, uh, nu, nutrients, and mm-hmm. I'm excited to ask him a lot of questions about that. Yeah, right. On the other side, we have another guy who is going to be working on my nutrition, Liam Holmes right. uh, from the UK. Also really interesting guy, also tailor-made nutrition, yeah. um, and that's going to be really let's, interesting let's, as well. Let's keep on that topic, mate, because it is the start of a new year and a lot of people are looking for, whether it's a detox program, which I'll call out in a little while and tell you why they're all bullshit, um, but, or, or just a new way of yep. eating. Speaking from a personal point of view, why do you look for someone to manage your nutrition, so to speak? So the reason why I look for somebody to manage my nutrition as well as I look for somebody to manage my training yeah. is I only have to worry about putting in the work. Right. There's so many things that you need to worry about and do and keep up with yeah. and it can all become a little bit overwhelming yeah. and it can take some of the focus away from putting in the effort in the training right. and actually just like trying to manage it all. Right. So if you can manage to find somebody who's talented and who you can pay the price for, yeah. then they will manage your food and your, your training. Yeah, like, right. And for me, I've had somebody manage my training for a long time. I've had somebody help me with my nutrition for a long time. Yeah. But this is kind of the next step. This guy yeah. will tell me exactly what to eat every single day yeah. depending on my training blocks, depending on each like day. So like if every Monday I have you know, three sessions and the first session is, you know, 16 minute bike ride. And the second session is like sports specific and strength. And the third one is yep. movement stuff. All the meals will be f- like built up accordingly to those sessions. Right. Um, right. So, so it's, it's super, very specific. super specific. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and that's quite interesting. And I don't say that will work for everyone. Yeah. But if you want to be really, really good and you want to take it to the next level yeah. and you're ready to dedicate yourself to it. Yeah. Then I think that's the only way. I mean, because it's interesting, mate. I, I, it's it's a question that I think we get asked a little bit. Like, if, if we take um, Mohammed Al Qasimi, like yeah. you've you've helped him to lose a hundred kilos. Yeah. So your knowledge of nutrition is obviously incredible. Like you you know all about it. When we spot, start to speak about macronutrients, you know all about it. If I say Andre, you're going to train super hard today, you know that you're going to need more calories. So the question that I have is, are you is a lot of what you get given, is it new to you or is it just stuff that you know? But it's simply a case of, like you said at the start, I just don't want to think about it. I just want someone to tell me it's worth my, and we're going to the price in a second, it's worth my X amount just to have it taken off my plate. I think on a macro overview, just yeah. like in general looking at nutrition, yeah. I think we all know a lot, especially as coaches, because yeah. we help a lot of clients, we help ourselves. But there's a lot of things that we don't yet understand right. that are the things that separate the good from the great. Right. Like, it's those small things. It's that little extra supplement at that time of a day right. or it's, you know, the timing of the meals. It's, like, that meal on a different day because of this one thing. And, yeah. like, you know, it's all those small details. Yeah. We, we can build a pretty solid diet, but... It's the small things in between. Yeah. It's like, oh, this meal is actually super easy to digest. Therefore, it's going to fit well with this training. Right. Like, we don't, like, and you can combine that meal with something else, which is going to make it easier. You know, there's yeah, so many yeah, things yeah. like yeah, yeah. glutamine, like all these different things yeah. that I never really heard about before. Yeah. And 
that there is not a lot of specific knowledge out on the internet about. Yeah, yeah. like that is digestible. There's yeah. probably a lot of PhD There's a lot of content. Like yeah, and yeah. that is really tough to understand and hard to put into yeah. your own training. But yeah. when it comes down to like understanding it and implementing it, it's yeah. really nice to have a nutritionist that can kind of explain it to you, yeah, make yeah. you understand why this and this works. I think that's the real value in 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 coaching as a whole, whether it be with a physical coach or like anyone can look up on the internet and, you know, let's take something super simple, progression to muscle up. Yeah. You know, they can download it. They can watch YouTube videos. It's exactly what we teach. We might teach it with a little bit more this way or a little bit more that way, but still there's a massive value in having a coach to say, okay, that's not working. Try this because you can't, you can't Google Okay, I'm struggling at the bottom portion of the dip. What should I do? No. Like you can, but it'll it'll be a, just such a broad spectrum of, of mixed messages that'll come so back. Or more like or more like nutrition wise, yeah. You can't Google I'm one eighty three, I weigh ninety kilos yeah. and I want to qualify for regionals. Yeah. They're what not, do I do? <laughs> yeah. They're not gonna come up with a detailed plan. Yeah, yeah. So So there we go. So there's a lot of things to think about under nutrition and we're going to get these guys on have a good chat so yeah we should get a little bit more knowledge out there i do think the application for the general population is slightly different of course but i also do think i mean i i, I was looking at some guys food the other week and generally it was like 90 percent okay the tweak that i made was super super small and the result was 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 pretty decent, yeah. and it wasn't something that was rocket science or anything like that. But it's it is just having those extra eyes to look over it. So if you are on a massive kick in January uh, or or in Feb or just in life as it should be, and that's my point about detox, you should actually be thinking about making changes forever, not just for January. Yeah. But uh, we'll get that off my chest another day. Just think about maybe having some guidance. I've used various. I've used three different nutritionists in the last year. Yeah. And just to try and learn different things from all of them, I've got a few different tricks from each of them. I'm pretty okay to do all my own stuff, and I'm, I'm pretty okay to eat the way I want to eat. But sometimes that guidance, like you say, and just taking it away from you really helps as well. And, and more importantly, everyone is individual. Like, everyone has specific needs. Like... The nutrition I follow right now is similar. It's built up on a similar base as probably other high-level CrossFitters that are are trying to achieve the same as me, but the tweaks are different. So you can, right. I think, from a general perspective, nobody should ask each other like, "What do you eat?" Because I want to eat the same. It yeah. should be overall. This is how it looks. Yeah. But you need to make your own tweaks. And like you say, you've been working with three different nutritionists. I think. Either you work with different ones yeah. or a broad, like a, a, a long time, yeah. or you work with the same, but you work with one that's open-minded and ready to, yeah. to you know, modify your nutrition, test out new things, see how you react to different things. Yeah, I think that's one thing as well. Like some of them, and I think if someone sends you, so I've worked with three people over the last year, and the first guy just literally, I was obviously just sent like a cut and paste plan, and yeah. it wasn't specific. It would work for like maybe seventy percent of the population, and it, it would get to a point. But those final tweaks, it's like it's like if you are on a weight loss journey, who cares about the stupid term of an elite athlete or anything like that? You're on a weight loss journey, and you've hit a plateau. You need a tweak. Yeah, it could be just one thing in your diet that need, that needs changing. So that's where that's where really the the value comes in and i actually put together an article about why you need a coach which i'm going to release quite soon which that addresses one of those areas as well yep. and it's just and the the cool thing is mate let's just hit the price quickly before we, we, we move on to some of the questions it's not overly expensive no like i i think the last guy i paid was like 200 dollars for the month yeah i pay 150 pounds for the first month which yep. is with like the full build plan, Skype yeah. consultation, daily feedback. Wow. And then from there, it's 75 pounds per month. So it's but pretty reasonable. Even the one I worked with before here in Dubai was 500 dirhams for the initial session, like it's the nothing. pinch test, everything, yeah. the plan. And then you can super see cheap. like you can do like meetups after for like yep. 350. Like so super cheap. Super it, cheap. It's not a big investment and yep. it's really worth Every single dime. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, we're sat here saying, oh, that's super cheap, super cheap. Someone's going to turn around and go, oh, yeah, actually, that's not super cheap at all. But I think for, like you just said there, the investment, the return, 
per dollar or yeah. per dirham is actually super huge when mate, you value your health. Mate, I used to throw up like every single week of training yeah. until I changed yeah, my right. diet. I remember, yeah. Like, that is worth I all think the it's money. because you used to go hard and now you just don't go hard enough. <laughs> 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 there we go. So, there's some of the guests that are coming up. A couple of other things we want to make you aware of. If you do want to jump in on the 1,000 burpee challenge, you can do that. Andre chose not to kick off Jan 1st with it. I didn't really have a choice seeing as I was teaching the class and I made that the class. Couldn't just stand there. So I managed to get through those 1,000 burpees, but I'm sure Andre will do it. We've got the retreat coming up. That's in a week's time. It's actually sold out the first retreat, but stay tuned to our social media and to our communication. We're going to show you what that's all about and also future retreats coming up. This is going to be something pretty, pretty unique and a special experience for those people yep. that got in on it. We've got over, well, 20 people. We're not supposed to have over 20, but there might be one over or maybe two over for the first retreat. We said 20 to keep it like that, but when people like beg you, kind of sometimes I think we'll be 20. Um, but stay tuned for that. And obviously, again, our specialty classes have started up, if you are a member, at the gym or want to get down to the gym. Gymnastics, weightlifting, and strongman are all back in the mix. Let's dive a little bit into those retreats. What are they all about? The What's retreat. What's happen if people are interested? I'm not allowed to tell you. <laughs> to going for the next one. Yeah, I mean, mate, we, we, we sort of kept a lot of the details a little bit under wraps. We want people to come with a real open mind. Yep. So we have put out a little bit of detail, but there's a lot of detail and a lot of things that people might be a little bit, at the start, surprised about. The, my, the major details are the retreat starts at, 6.30 a.m. on a Friday morning. Yep. Everyone meets at the gym. We get on a bus. And these are kind of the things that we've done a lot different or what we think is a lot different. So we're actually, we start the retreat here at fight and we put everyone together on a 20-seater bus. There's 20 seats on the bus. You all sit on the bus together. Boom. You go to the desk. So it's on from literally, at, sorry, the bus leaves at 6.30. The clients get here at 6. You hand over your phones. There's no... <laughs> there's, uh, that's one of the secret parts. But Well, that's, that's actually a team decision. We're going to make a, a, a group decision on mobile phone communication we want to strip this thing down we don't want any distractions so we want the group as a whole to say okay we're going to have an hour of mobile phone time or no problem here's a sandwich bag i'm going to put my phone i'm just going to put my sim card in the sandwich bag that's going to be some of the options so this is the kind of stuff we're thinking about you then hop on the bus we drive to a location which hasn't been disclosed we then do what we're calling a hike some people might run it some people will struggle to walk it but everyone will get to the top Yep. There'll be a lot of different things involved in that. And we then move from after that event, we move to a, a camp, which we then go through some all the time, mainly about goal setting and sort of achievement is, is, is the focus for, for this camp. Just help people to, to, to get there. We just ask that people are super engaged. We'll, they'll leave, they'll arrive with what maybe they think they want from either the week, the weekend, the month or the year or even life and they'll leave with either clarity how to achieve it because a lot of people say yeah i'd love to you know some people are motivated by material objects they just are yeah you know and i can help you buy a ferrari i if, if that's really your goal i can help you do it Easy. some people come to us and say they want to run a marathon if you want to buy a ferrari come and see me i'll help you to do that so they'll figure out, but they don't always have the idea of how to run the marathon or how to buy the Ferrari. And it's always been, ah, oh, the marathon's 42K, ah, oh, the Ferrari's 2 or 3 million. I don't know how to get there. So we're going to help people to give them a, a way of setting the goal and also putting in what we call the dimensions to achieve that goal. Wow. So that's something that's going to be super powerful. And also what we're promoting here is we're coaches but we can, I learn a lot from the people within our community. So when we put 20 people together, you know, we have people that are, are in amazing jobs within our community. There's going to be people on this camp that are literally in charge of decisions like that change the future of this city. So we're going to learn a lot from them as well. And it's a lot about sort of peer coaching and just, just bouncing off each other. So that's kind of a lot of what the first day is, and there's some sunset activities. We then wake up pretty early the next morning. We have a dawn activity into the sunrise. 
which you're involved in. Yeah. Yeah, that's another yeah. surprise for everyone. <laughs> this guy's coming along. And, and then we go into a, a little bit more of a team event, a physical team event, before we wrap it up with a, a nice big sort of deload action points. And so that people, the, one of the biggest things is that it's all very good to, to open up a can of worms and to make people think. And I'm not saying that people will leave the retreat with 100% action plans for every single goal that they have. However, they'll have some idea of how to set those concrete action plans. Some of their goals, might they might leave there and might go, yeah, I know how to start this tomorrow. So, it, But you don't get that unless you have a big sort of deload and wrap up. And then we have what we call a my commitment session as well. So oh, wow. where people stand up and say, like, this is my commitment. From this weekend, this is my commitment. So there's a com- ta- t- Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> there's a big, like, there's a big, that's how we close it out in a my commitment. So at any stage, you're going to be on the camp. At any stage after, I want you to come up to me and say, you stood up there and you said, my commitment is, what are you doing about it? And that's how powerful this community through a retreat, through taking 20 people away actually becomes. So, yeah, it's going to be. That's going to be awesome. crazy. Yeah. And then we'll all hop back on the bus and we'll be back in a fight by 2 o'clock the next day. We have phones. There might be some phones oh. in the end. <laughs> so you get 36 hours of complete immersion. Boom. It's, it's all on, but there is also time to chill. There is a sunset drink. If you want it to be alcoholic, oh. it can be alcoholic. If you want it to be... I, there's actually... <laughs> we were actually having this discussion the other day. We're like, okay, for the sunset drink, so... Like, we're okay if some people have alcohol. What should be the other option? I'm like, water. <laughs> They're like, should we take soft drinks? I'm like, nah. <laughs> so you either have a beer, a glass of wine, or a bottle of water. Thanks, Volvic. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, mate, that's basically, that's what is going on there. So it's going to be super cool. And we'll obviously, we'll put out a lot of media about that so people can see it. But I think one of the biggest things that I found is that the people that are, the people that are on it, Literally were the people that just mailed us and said, I want, it, I want in, how much is it? And their second mail would be, I'll pay tomorrow. Ooh. They didn't ask, where are we going? What are we doing? Like, they just, they just dropped everything. Like, and they're like, it's a retreat. I trust you guys. I'm going to do it. The people that didn't end up signing up were like, how much is it? What do I get for that? Where is it? How do I get there? What am I going to eat? So it's like, it's quite... It's quite interesting, the massive split, and yeah. something that's really interesting, and I'm going to call all the guys out on this, is that the guys wanted to know every single finite detail. Really? Whereas the females were like, you have a retreat, where do I pay, and when do I pay? <laughs> that, was, that was it. Honestly, mate, it is crazy. So I did a little bit of sort of trying to understand why the male and female behavior is so different. And it's just the way we're wired. Women are, are okay to say, yeah, I know. It's a retreat. I understand. I relinquish control. Just tell me how much it is and I'm going to pay it. Whereas the guys are a little bit more OCD and need it's to like know. It. Retreats? Yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's a call out. And as a result of that, we actually have about 70% of the attendees are females. I think it might be more. Yes. It is insane. It is absolutely <laughs> insane the way it's worked out. So I learned something very cool from it as well. And it doesn't mean that next time I'm not going to give, I'm going to give loads more information. Not at all. I think, you know, I think to be honest, it's something that to get and why we're being a little bit discreet about the information that we give is because to get that real sort of emptiness to be able to build something, you need to strip everything away. You yeah. just, I just need you to come and relax. If I take your phone off, you just need to say yes. If I say go there, you just need to say yes. If I say you're only allowed that T-shirt for the whole weekend, you just need to say yes. You just Because we're not doing it. Because it this is not G.I. Jane. This is not stupid boot camp. This is doing it. This is stripping you down so that you can think. So that you're not distracted. Yeah. So that you're not thinking, oh, I need a different T-shirt. Oh, no, that's the only one you have. With, you're going to have more than one t-shirt. I think you're allowed three. Let's see. <laughs> There's something hidden about that. Anyway. we going to be super exciting. It is, it's going to be super good, mate. So we're really looking forward to that. 
couple of questions that we've got that we should answer. We've rambled on about different stuff, but I feel like we're giving you guys some value. So we'll just hit over these questions. Actually, this one, mate, I have to apologize to Kim Smith. She sent this question in like a while ago. And um, basically, I don't know how it got lost because I screenshot it and I saved it. And then I only found it the other day. She said that she had two good ideas for the podcast at the end of the year to do a show with some of the more interesting members on how their year was, achievements, etc. She obviously thinks there's some interesting members and not interesting members, which I think is a bit harsh, <laughs> but maybe true. And um, she said also like the coaches and maybe more in depth. <laughs> and she said, which I, I'm not sure about this second idea, but it probably is about time that we had Holly back on the podcast. I'm not trying to be nasty to Holly. She wants Holly and Carmen episode because that would be a bestseller. <laughs> if you agree, then let's do it. <laughs> Let us know if you want Holly and Carmen on the same show. I'm not sure if Andre and I could handle them both at the same time. We'll make them run the show. We actually haven't had Holly on for a while, and she's just about to launch something quite huge with Smith Street Paleo. Yes, you've been asking for it for a long time. We've got meal plans coming out, so maybe that's something worth us yeah, that'd talking be cool. about. And Boz can just be here to just keep our company. Yeah, create good, good ambience. <laughs> so sorry that we lost that one, Kim. Do you want to read out the next question, mate? Because this one is quite a thing I've got to answer for it. From Ross. Yeah. Random question. Hey, guys. Random question for you. A few months back on the podcast, Marcus mentioned a comprehensive, in brackets, <laughs> if bit gross, food allergy test he undertook. However, no other details were given. I would love to find out the name of the company that provides this so I can look into into it with a view to talking to taking it also. Yeah. Struggling to find one locally that fits is what I want. Thanks again, Ross. Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. I I actually didn't realize that we didn't mention where we got it from. Just to to recap that one quickly, I had uh, a lot of testing done, five uh, vials of blood, fasted, five unfasted. Okay. Three and this is what he was saying. The gross part: three day stool sample. Boom. So first day, it, and it is quite gross. First day, you have to shit in one cup. Second day, you shit in two cups. Third day, you shit in three cups. It's a lot of crapping. How do you place the cups, mate? <laughs> okay, so, we'll talk about that. No, I could tell you, like if people need to know, like it's just the way it is. It's a clinical thing. You basically get given a tray. You have a shit on a tray, and you get given a plastic spoon. And you put it, they're not cups, they're like bigger version of a test tube. And you scoop your turd into one of these big test tubes and it has to reach a certain line. It's challenging wow. and it's messy, but they give you plastic gloves. Thank God. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy, mate. It, it is because you, you, you have to get a certain level for them to be able to analyze your, your stool sample. Yeah. Stool is like the professional word. And I so, just call it a shit sample. Okay, um, so how many samples that in total? Three stools? So three stool, ten vials of blood. Man. Yeah. So they literally test everything, mate. If you have something going on in your gut, if you have bacteria, they test all of your hormones, insulin, growth hormone, estrogen, you name it, they test it. Their cortisol, your stress hormone. They also test 250 foods for allergies. So it's really, really comprehensive. The whole testing, I was. it's covered under my insurance, so I was... I think pretty lucky. It was about 9,000 dirhams. So it's 2,000 euros worth of tests to find out what's going on. Now, for some people, it, I think you have to be a little bit subjective in, in what you want to achieve from it. So what's really your problem? Do you have a problem with a certain food? Have you done eliminations before? All of these different things. So, But they're, they're great tests, mate. And the place that I had it done in Dubai... And I, I've got it up here so I don't screw it up. It's called the Institute for Biophysical Medicine, IFBM. The doctor that I saw is a lady called Dr. Shafali Verma. And she is what's called a functional medicine doctor. The thing is as well is that when she does all these tests, if you do have something wrong, the main things that she'll do is suggest what's now called functional medicine, which is more things like if you have a gut problem with gut bacteria, they'll, they'll prescribe to you like natural substances to clear yeah. it out. 
So it's not, you're not now going to go, you're not had a blood test, you've got high cholesterol, you're going to go on some high cholesterol pills. pills. Yeah. Like it's not medication like it's that. It's functional. It's functional. The biggest buzzword of 2017. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I think of this flipping decade, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, what it, and that's what people say. Well, what is functional medicine? Like everything that all the, when I did it, I had to have a couple of, different um i had to have a couple of different supplements what i had was a probiotic uh, digestive enzyme that for me the enzyme in my body that was responsible for digesting fat wasn't working properly yeah that's that was one of the bottom lines everything else there was a couple of other things but everything else was was pretty good a few foods i should stay away from stayed away from them didn't really have a reaction like i had to stop eating eggs but i never had a reaction to eggs so when i eat them i don't have a problem but it showed in my blood work that I had a problem. Does it also show stuff like, I mean, this is on more serious end, but like stuff like cancer, like could it, could it potentially uh, show those kind of things? That's a good question that I don't know the answer to. Okay. Um, it does show precursors to diabetes Okay. Uh, because it gives you insulin levels. It, so it, it takes, it does all of your blood markers, um, cancerous ones. I don't but know. Potentially, yes they no. would be able to see if something is going wrong, and yeah. maybe from yeah. there taking yeah. a biopsy. I mean, or I mean the whatever. thing the thing is as well, mate. When you when you do look, and I'm not an expert on cancer, so please, if if you do know more about this, then just let us know, and and we'll correct it. And I don't want to put something out there that's that's not right. However, when you've got cancerous issues, what I've seen is either you you feel lumps or something's not right you feel something not right, or you have a blood test for one thing and it shows that you've got something wrong in your body and then they dig in and they do some more tests yeah. for that. That's I've had a few people recently close that have had some issues with yeah. cancer and that's how it's been found out. So that's the only experience That's why I was I'm asking because like, yeah. I've also had a lot of people in my yeah. surroundings with yeah. that and I'm like, should I get tested for like just... yeah. And I was wondering if that test maybe. I wonder could if we could maybe get someone on the show to have a chat with us about cancer. Like, and should you get tested yearly? Yeah. What kind of tests should you get? Yeah, I mean, because we hear it in females, you know, with breast cancer, make yeah. sure you you check your breasts every so often. On guys, make sure you check your testicles yeah. at, on 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 these periods. But yeah, I guess, mate, it's a really good question because stuff like if you look at stuff like pancreatic cancer. From what I've seen, and, and again, I'm not really well read on this, but from my experience, like literally people are diagnosed with pancre pancreatic cancer and three weeks later, they're gone. Yeah, that's the one where you have like maximum of 48 weeks. Yeah. Uh, 48, uh, yeah. Weeks. weeks. No, yeah, maybe weeks. Yeah. Yeah, it's not long at all, mate. You know, I, I had one friend a couple of years ago. He was given three weeks, lived for six months. Just over 50 years old, yeah. pancreatic cancer. So it's actually super interesting. If people do know about that, how to test, what tests we should be doing, or if you are well-read on cancer, even through through having someone in your family that you know has yeah. suffered and, and you want to come on the show and chat about or just send us some notes on it, we'd love to share that. Yeah, we appreciate that. I, I think that's something that, that's super important. But I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to ask uh, Dr. Shvali if her tests if it would show up in that. Yep. But I would presume, mate, through 10 vials of blood, I would hope that we'd see something. Mate. <laughs> if not, so, it's hidden really good. <laughs> so there's the answer to that one, Ross. IFBM, Institute for Biophysical Medicine. It's here in Dubai. It's at Healthcare City, and you need to see Dr. Shafali Verma. You do, it is going to cost you a little bit of money, so you do need to sort of, you know, you need to make sure it's covered under the insurance or be willing to pay. I mean, it's the same talk that we have before yeah. about nutrition. Yeah. Is it worth it? I mean, if you've had problems your whole life, are you good? Because you can't digest uh, <laughs> fats. It. Uh, well, it's, it's a big it. problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mate, it's the time of year, and I think this is a good question that we've had. I've had it in person. We've had it sent in. The question is, I'm thinking of doing the Open this year. What are your thoughts? A... And secondly, this is the million dollar question. Being that we're almost halfway through Jan and the Open starts at the end of Feb, how can I best prepare for it? What's your, I won't call it idiot's guide, mate, but what's your go-to guide? People are woken up. It's Jan. Want to do the Open. Holy shit. I can't do a box jump. I don't know how to do a muscle up. How do I get ready? All right. You got f about five or six weeks left. Um, the Open will start February 23rd and last for five weeks. You will need to make a list over the things you can do and you think you're doing well. And then you should make a list over the things that you can't yet do. 
And so you can make a game plan on how to achieve those things within the ni- next five to six weeks. Right. I would definitely recommend as soon as you have that list of things that you can do that you consult a coach um, yep. or a personal trainer who can now look at the list and tell you, first of all, if it's possible for you to be able to manage all these skills within the given period and how to approach it if it is. Right. Um, and even if it isn't, how to approach it. And and if it's... Uh if you should, because there's obviously the two options, scaled and RX. So the yep. first thing is your inventory. Look at where you're at. Some people you can pretty much know that they're going to go scale. Exactly. But otherwise, just if you're not sure, just go with your inventory to your coach and say, what do you think? Yeah. Like, for example, I worked t- right now with two guys, Tarek and Josh from the gym. Um, both of them came to me about one month ago and said they wanted to do the open RX. Yeah. So I put them together. We have I have them once a week. And... Um, we basically just made a list of all the stuff that they need to be able to do in order to compete RX. Yep. And the first thing that most people struggle with, and I think that the open is, is mainly based on, is gymnastics capacity and skill level. Right. Um, like, of course, weightlifting is super important. Yeah. Cardio is important, but you know, a workout could start with seven muscle ups. So right. <laughs> you can be in great shape, but if you can't do seven muscle ups, it doesn't yeah. really matter, does yeah. it? Yeah. So we basically just so basically for everyone, nail down all the skills. Uh, here in Interfy, we have the gymnastics PT or weightlifting PT package, yep. which is a five week package where you have one session a week with two homework sessions. Right. So what I do with these two guys is that they have some homework to do every week. Right. Because simply, we'll walk through an exercise, and it's not sure that it going to get it in one week of course right or at least in that one hour so they need to do some homework yeah. so just get a list and an overview and also be realistic yeah like if you're far away from open rx then yeah. you know focus on smashing and yeah. scale and, and next year you go for x i think that's one of the things and one of, one of my biggest pieces of advice to people is once you've listed those exercises that are in the open you can check out the coolest thing is games.crossfit.com the open started in 2011 you have since 2011 of workouts there's been in the first year there was actually six open workouts since then there's been five open workouts you can list all the all the movements and you can actually see what role that movement plays yep. and if you look at some of the more basic stuff yes you do need to be able to do the muscle ups sometimes you might need to do like some gymnastics capacity but don't forget about the stuff that you are actually quite good at or you can become very good at very fast something like a box jump yeah something like double unders i guarantee you if you if you can't do double unders well or efficiently you can't do the open rx like no. that's something it's almost like to be able to do one or two muscle ups but if you look at something like a muscle up as well in some of the workouts it's actually come at the end and everyone has been so worried about the muscle up They've forgotten the fact that, you know, there was uh, 150 war balls, 90 double unders, 30 muscle ups. The first thing that people did when that workout came out, holy shit, how am I going to do 30 muscle ups? Yep. I'm like, dude, it's a 12 minute cap. How are, how are you going to get 150 war balls yeah. and 90 double unders? You know what I mean? So the focus as well, if you do have time, but if you're not really realistically, if you're nowhere near a muscle up now or you're nowhere near a handstand push up now, and the coach says it's going to be tough to get there. Don't worry. Go for the stuff that are the easy wins. The easy win last year in the first workout was being able to jump over a box and do a, a very light dumbbell snap yeah. multiple times in like 20 minutes or something. You, I remember you, you told me last year um, one kind of mental drill you use when you prepare for the open workouts. Yeah. You see the open workout come, came out. You focus on the things that you're good at. Yeah. And that's all you put your emphasis on. Like a workout, like you just mentioned, 150 wall balls. Uh, what was it? 300 double unders? Uh, uh, 90 double unders. 90 double unders and 30 muscle ups. Yeah. We know that muscle ups is not your best thing. But you know that wall balls and double unders, you'll freaking smash. Yeah. So you'll have a lot more time for those muscle ups that you exactly. might not be good at. Exactly. And I think that's such a great approach. Like if you see a workout that scares you. Yeah. Find the element where you know you're strong yeah. and push there. Yeah, like, you absolutely. know that you can push harder than the others in that one. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's the thing as well, mate. And one, one other little caveat on that is if you take a workout like the 150 wall balls, 90 double unders, 30 muscle ups, CrossFit have now, because there's so many people that would get to the muscle ups but not, maybe not get one, they now put a, they, they split the workout so you almost, it, for your ranking there's a time yeah 
Tiebreaker. Tiebreaker time. So it's how fast you can do 150 war balls and 90 double unders. We'll, so if I do it, if I do it in five minutes, probably can. Not not these days, but before I could. Nah, yeah. still a bit fast. <laughs> but if if I did it in five minutes and you do it in five minutes and five seconds, I've beaten you. So I'm going to get higher ranking on that leaderboard. So that's also something to look forward to. So hopefully that as answers the question. As Andre said, get an inventory done, get it out see your coach or see someone that you trust and have a reasonable conversation figure out how you're going to do it and focus on those positives mate we're at 45 minutes i don't want to let these guys listen to our boring nonsense we've actually got a few questions that have not been answered one about protein shakes it's a bit old but we'll get to it in the next q a yep. and one about getting up early in the morning making it happen that's actually quite a big topic which i think we should kick off the next listener q a with we've got another one coming for you we will get holly and carmen on the podcast kim don't worry about that we'll get holly on to speak about the new meals That'd we can get boz on it like as a test dummy she i think she tests most of the new meals mate that's a pretty good start to the year yes and i'm um, so much looking forward to all the cool shows we have coming absolutely and if there is ideas people that you want on the show or ideas that you have or stuff that you don't like that we do, please let us know. And the last big call out for someone who has some decent knowledge or commentary and could help us about some precursors, some pre-testing for cancer, I think that would be a great show. So if we can get that done, that would be super cool. That has been episode number two, 386 of the Inner Fight Podcast. Thanks Thank a lot for, for listening. listening.